We are continuing on from our first video about global warming and climate change. In the last video, we talked a little bit about the science behind it, the types of radiation, short wavelength versus long wavelength. Now we're going to talk about the impact a little bit and look at some of these graphs and some of the evidence. So our little pictures here are showing us some of the effects that we've talked about already. You know, the obvious ones, you've all heard about the sad polar bear, obviously from melting ice, rising sea levels, and more distance that these polar bears have to swim. We got to go a little bit deeper than that. So first, very important thing for us to understand is that global warming by itself you got you to gotta understand it beyond the basic level. We need the greenhouse effect because without the actual greenhouse effect, the average temperature on Earth would be negative 18 degrees Celsius. So if we did not have our atmosphere that is actually trapping some of the sun's radiation and bringing it back to the Earth, then we wouldn't actually be able to survive. So we do need to have a greenhouse effect. So what's all the fuss about? Well, we're talking about the enhanced greenhouse effect. That's us putting extra greenhouse gases into the atmosphere because of our industrialization and burning of fossil fuels to give ourselves energy. And so we end up putting more greenhouse gases and therefore causing more energy to be trapped in our atmosphere. And so these graphs are actually showing, you know, we're going to see more in some of the other slides later, we're basically showing how global temperatures have been increasing for a long time. So since we've been measuring this stuff and there's ways that we can go back and actually estimate what the temperatures were and what the carbon dioxide concentrations were by analyzing what's in kind of trapped ice as well too. So here we have it, mean temperatures on Earth have increased for the past 200 years or so. And then I'm highlighting here that we're talking about the enhanced greenhouse effect. That's the human contribution part, and that's the part that we are worrying about. There is some doubt, especially if you look at the mainstream media. Um, I don't want to speak about politics currently, but anyways, I think the most important thing to understand is that climate change scientists, the professionals who study this stuff and try to help us understand how we work and how we can live better lives and they're actually analyzing the data, they all agree uh, that humans have made it worse and this is the enhanced greenhouse effect. And so most countries are on board with trying to think of solutions to help us be able to get past this or reduce the enhanced greenhouse effect so that we can make the future a better place for our children. So like I said in the first video, it's a good idea to quiz yourself every now and then. Here's a good time to do that. We just talked about the greenhouse effect and the enhanced greenhouse effect. Here's a graphic really quickly by the Environmental Protection Agency or what it was before, uh, published in 2012. I've covered up the explanations here, but if you look at the sun, look at the earth, look at these arrows, try to pause the video and explain what these arrows are actually showing. Use as much vocabulary as you can to explain how the greenhouse effect works. Okay, hopefully you did that and you didn't just skip through it, but you do need to quiz yourself to find out if you understand this stuff. Now I'm just gonna reveal these boxes. We've already explained and talked about this in the first video, but here I just wanna give you a chance. You can take a look at some of the information here before I move on. So if we go back and take a look at some of this data once again, you can see these are some very famous graphs that you'll see. I think I'll have the sources up here in a little bit, or I put them in a previous video, so you'll see the sources there. The blue line indicates kind of the overall global temperature, and the red line here, which is also discussed previously, goes up and down. That's because of seasons, and so see if you can try to reason that out a little bit as well too. We also have data that shows us how carbon dioxide concentrations have changed all the way back to 100 or 200 or 300,000 years ago. And you may be asking yourself, how is it possible that 300,000 years ago, there was data that was actually collected that we can put this together. So people who don't really understand how this data gets collected tend to be kind of skeptical about this, right? Like, well, we weren't around 300,000 years ago. So how do we know that it's all fake then? Therefore, we don't care. But Here's a simple explanation of how we can go back and estimate some of these things. So my question is, how do we know about the past with some of this stuff? And so basically what we're doing is we're able to access ice that's been trapped in the Antarctic for a while. Um, those ice layers have been formed over thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of years. And the deeper the ice is, we can actually find that there are 
bubbles of trapped air that match kind of the atmospheric conditions of that time. And so you can actually extract those carefully, obviously, without mixing in the current air that we are breathing uh, to estimate the carbon dioxide concentrations. And you can also estimate the temperatures using the hydrogen isotope ratios from water. So if you understand what isotopes are, you probably heard of like carbon-14 and other sections of the biology syllabus you heard about, uh, nitrogen and phosphorus and sulfur, the isotopes of them being used to label things to help us see where protein and DNA are actually going. But over time, as these isotopes decay, it kind of gives us like a backwards kind of time scale graph that allows us to estimate a lot of things. So from here, we can uh, gather the carbon dioxide concentrations and we can figure out um, what global temperatures were before as well too. So if you summarize all of this, it basically shows that Carbon dioxide concentrations strongly correlate with temperature changes over the years. And also we need to, of course, point out as scientists that just because we see a correlation, it doesn't mean that there's necessarily a causation between them, but it gives us a starting point. And then uh, we can actually see very clearly um, not just the correlation, but also a significant link between carbon dioxide concentrations and global temperatures. So carbon dioxide is definitely a greenhouse gas, so we understand that this is something we have to be aware of as well too. So here are a few more graphs that are showing carbon dioxide concentrations. We talked about flux in one of our first videos in topic four about ecology. Flux meaning kind of the following the movement of carbon when we're looking at nutrient cycles and where they're actually moving. So we can see that fossil fuel burning has contributed a lot of extra carbon into the atmosphere. And if you consider all the other sources of carbon as well too, you can see that it's likely that fossil fuel burning is one of the main contributors to increasing this total carbon flux into the actual atmosphere. So for the last 150 years, we've seen carbon dioxide levels rise drastically. We know that this is from the combustion of fossil fuels. We started doing this primarily around the Industrial Revolution. I'm sure you've heard of that as well. At the same time, we've also seen global temperatures increase. Most changes have started occurring since 1980 when everything started kicking in, global production. Other variables probably affect temperature as well too. And we know that this is just one of the impacts, but it's the largest one that we can actually measure. So global warming seems to be kind of uneven. It goes up and down, changes with seasons, definitely. Um, more plants you have, the more carbon dioxide is going to be taken out of the air because of photosynthesis. And so that's something that explains kind of these up and down patterns that you see uh, from year to year as seasons change. Some slow warming periods and some rapid warming periods, but overall, if you study the changes in all these patterns as they go up and down, up and down, overall, definitely increasing quite a lot. So that's something significant for us to be looking at as well too. So here is another very famous graph. You can take a look right here, historical data relating to global climate change. Um, this was also made famous in a documentary a while ago by Al Gore, who was going to be the next president, but it was kind of a, a contested presidency at that time. But he went on and probably still is doing some work in raising awareness about global warming and the greenhouse, the enhanced greenhouse effect. And so he showed a graph that looks something like this as well too, where over time we can see these temperatures are changing, but only in the last hundred years or so do we see really significant rises. So this guy is quite shocked by a lot of this data.